All right, what's going on everyone? In Talon, we have a handful of modifiers which can be very useful for styling elements on certain conditions such as hover or focus. Building on top of this approach, we recently were introduced to a new plugin called Talon Signals. This plugin utilizes what are called style queries via container queries to reactively enable a custom state that can be consumed by any of its descendants in the DOM. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this plugin works. Now, what's nice about this plugin is that it's very similar to the existing group and peer utilities that we have right now in Tailwind. So the group utility allows you to style an element based on the state of its parent. And you can just think of this as a div wrapping another div within the DOM structure. And whenever something happens, such as a hover on the parent div, we can style the child div accordingly based on that hover. So say for example, we might have a card component in which you want to modify portions of the card body whenever we hover anywhere on the card. So we can just go ahead and add the group class on the parent, and then we can use the group class along with a modifier such as hover for example, on any of its children to go ahead and update the styles accordingly whenever we have a hover on the parent div. Now similar to the group utility, we have the peer utility, which can style an element based on the state of its sibling. And you can just think of this as two divs sitting on the same level in the DOM structure. Now the only gotcha with this is that it can only be used on the previous sibling. Now this utility can be very useful in the event that maybe you have an input and then beneath that input you have an error message that you want to display whenever this input was invalid. So what you would do is you would add the peer class to the input and then on the paragraph element you'd go ahead and add the peer class again along with the invalid modifier and then we can use this to go ahead and apply a class to show the element whenever the input is invalid. And again this would not work backwards where you might want to listen to a modifier on the paragraph element and then update a style on the input. And what's really great about these utilities is that we're doing this without any JavaScript and it's just pure CSS. Now, although these utilities are great, there are some limitations with them, and that's what this new Talon Signals plugin is looking to address. Now, before we continue, I would like to mention that this plugin is experimental since it does rely on style queries, which are not widely supported in all browsers. The good news, however, is that Safari and Firefox, which are the browsers that are lacking support for this, have already begun to start support for style queries in development, so this could become widely available soon. Now to get started using this plugin, you're first going to have to install it and then you're going to want to add it to your tail and config within the plugins. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example of how signals work and the issue that it's trying to address. So let's say we have an input and beneath this we have a div and nested within that div we have a button. Now let's go ahead and say we want to update the background color of our button whenever the input is checked. So we can start by adding the peer class on our input. And then on the div, we can also add the peer class along with the check modifier. And to target the background color of the button within this div, we would have to use a custom arbitrary selector. And within this, we can then target the nested button and then we can apply our class. And now when we check and uncheck the input, the background color will go ahead and update accordingly. Now let's take a look at the same example, but instead we're gonna use a signal. So on the input, once again, we can add the peer class. Now on the div that is wrapping the button, we can add our peer class along with the check modifier and then apply the signal class. And then on our button, we can specify the signal modifier and we can apply the class that we want to add whenever our signal is active, which in this case is when the input gets checked. So the main benefit with this plugin is that we don't have to use any arbitrary selector variants to target our nested elements. It's going to provide a much more straightforward approach allowing you to apply those styles directly to the target nested elements which in my opinion improves the readability and is just a much better approach. Now with this example we have, using a custom arbitrary selector really isn't all too bad, but we can see the benefit when we have some deeply nested items that we want to target. So for example, let's go ahead and take our button and nest it within another div. And now you're gonna see that this is going to break our intended functionality. To fix this, we have to go ahead and update the custom arbitrary selector to modify where the button is now located. Now with our signals example, no matter how deep this button gets nested, we can always use the signal modifier to apply our class to our elements very easily. Now, although the main purpose of this plugin was to provide a much more straightforward approach to styling ancestor state as we've seen, you can actually activate a signal based on a descendant state using the has pseudo selector. So here we just have a simple card with an input wrapped within a div. 
Now on this div wrapper, let's add the has modifier and check to see if the input has been checked. And if it is, we'll create our signal. Now on the card, we can add some classes when our signal is active. And once we toggle the checkbox, you're going to see those styles being applied. So as you're able to see, you can style an entire block of code based on one of its descendants, which in this case was the input element. Now, the one thing that you're going to want to be careful with when using it in this way is circulatory issues. So if your child depends on the parent, but the parent also depends on the child, you may run into some issues. So anyways, I think this is a really cool plugin and once all browsers get full support, it's definitely something I think a lot of developers that use Talent are going to benefit from as it simplifies the application of styles based on ancestor states, it goes ahead and improves the developer experience with a more declarative API, and it reduces the need for complex selector chaining and arbitrary targeting. But definitely let me know what your thoughts are on this plugin. I think once it gets full support, as I mentioned, it's something that I'm going to be using within my project since I do often use Tailwind. But anyways, thank you for watching. If you did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.